Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my full moon art for September. I've been making a full moon piece each month that are based on the named full moons for each month. In September 2019, it is going to be the harvest moon. The harvest moon can be in September or October based on when the the autumn equinox is or when the first of fall is. And the harvest moon is the one closest to that, that date. The, of course, the first day of fall, which is the 23rd. So this month, the moon falls, the full moon falls on the 14th, which is the closest one to that particular date. So therefore, it is the harvest moon. Sometimes... In other other years, when it's not the harvest moon, it might be called the the um, corn moon, or the uh, what are some other ones? Corn moon, uh, barley moon, things like that. Basically, the, in September it's harvest. It's the time when the corn is ready to pick. It's the time when when it's time to harvest the barley. It's time when uh, the plums are scarlet when the deer paw the earth when the calves grow hair. Those are other names. So <laughs> it's all about harvest time and autumn. So that being said, I decided to create a scene where my moon is rising over farming fields because that's something that I remember from my childhood. I, I grew up in eastern Oregon where there was a lot of wheat, huge, huge wheat production and it was hilly and you would look out and you'd see patches of green, patches of gold, patches of rust, patches of, of dark brown, depending on, you know, maybe that field was fallow. And so that was the kind of scene I wanted to create, a, you know, like a little farmhouse or something, a barn on a, a big tapestry of fall type colors that are fields getting ready to be harvested. So the next thing I decided that since it was gel printing month <laughs> because everyone's crazy gel printing right now that I would use my gel plates as a tool and yes I said that I said my gel plates as a tool these are tools they are not the end-all be-all of creating art you don't make a print and then say oh that's my art I mean some people do but usually gel pr gel plates are used to make one of a kind unique prints called mono prints. That's the reason they're called mono because mono means one. You can only create it once. It only comes out that particular way once. And generally the way that you see them used is to make backgrounds or make collage paper. But that's not the only way that you can use them. You can use them in so many ways. They're just a tool. They're a tool to apply paint that only happens once because it's a monoprint. So what I decided to do was to create my landscape using my gel plates. And I got out the eight by 10 because it was about the width of my paper. And I got out uh, a mini square and then a, I think it's a four inch round. And then I already had out my uh, three by five or four by six or whatever that is. Uh, it was already out from you know, gel printing all month. So the first thing I did is I wanted to create my sky. And by the way, this paper that I'm using is kind of a unique paper. It's called, it's called an acrylic paint pad. It's from Arteza or Arteza, however you want to say it. Different people say it different ways. And it's, it's rough. It's bumpy. It's like a canvas. It's meant to mimic the texture of canvas, but it is a pressed paper. So it will give a unique texture as I'm printing because it, the, pa the paint doesn't necessarily get all the way down into the grooves. So it also makes it more interesting to print on because you get a different effect than if you'd print it on a smooth paper. And you'll be able to see that in the close-ups at the end. But the first thing I did was I decided that I could use a chalk marker since, since gel plates are see-through. I could use a chalk marker on the back of my, I, I put them on a clear plexiglass uh, plate to, to use them because I think it keeps them um, straighter and easier to use. I see most people just leaving the, the plastic on the back that comes with the product 
which is a great way to do it too. But it's just a little bit more flexible and I like, I like it to be firmer. So I wanted um, these little pieces of acrylic. So I just got a sheet of, of acrylic plastic at the home store, um, which is meant for replacing windows, I think. And I cut it up into pieces using a saw and it was terrible. Uh, I would recommend that you have a, have something like a circular saw or uh, a, even a hobby saw of some sort. Uh, doing it with the hand saw sucked, but that's how I did it because I don't have any of those other type of tools. And I just made little pieces to put my different size plates on. So I have one for each one. So anyway, when I flip it over, I can see my drawing that I that I drew on this this paper in, in light pencil. I can see it and I can create lines with a chalk marker on the back of my plate. And then when I turn it over, it will be the right direction to put paint on. So the first thing I did, and that was a while ago now, I'm, I'm just talking way too slow. <laughs> um, I drew the, the marks of these hills and then I applied the paint with a brayer in the along the lines of the hills, and then I printed the sky and the hills all with one go with the eight by ten. But that's the only time you're going to see the eight by ten during this uh, this pr printing session because I ended up switching to smaller ones for all the smaller details. So to fill in where the printing didn't um, fill in everything, and also to add more layers of color, I also used the small. Um, what is that? It's probably a three by three square to kind of fill in some of the areas along the top of the hill with a little bit lighter paint. And then I also used the long skinny one to, to make my um, hill line with the light colored paint so that I know what that, where that is. The one thing that I noticed is that just like if you were drawing on a piece of thick glass, when you draw with that chalk marker on the back, of the plate, if you're not right up over it drawing, you're actually going to end up being a little bit off because the, your perspective and you're looking through the plate, your perspective is a little bit off. But um, so that's how come my hills came down further than the original drawing. So then I had to correct that by adding more paint. But adding more paint is what I want to do. That's the whole point of me doing this with a, a gel plate. You might say, hey, just use a brush paint some acrylic paint on there. What are you doing, you crazy woman? The, the interesting thing about printing is that you get layers and layers of, of pattern and color as you're doing it. Paint builds up. Uh, if you don't clean off the plate, you get more surprises. You, get, you can build one color on top of another with the other one still showing through, especially if you're considering opacity versus um, translucency of the paint. You can put one color out over the top of the other and then add into that, you know, the, the different qualities of the plate, which just, it just makes it more interesting. Like here in this, in this case, when I was use, trying to use this rust color, I had a little bit of dark paint on the edge of my brayer. And when I brayered it, I got that dark paint on the edge. And I think that looks cool. That's like really cool. I'm also applying the paint in some cases with a brush. If like in the cases of the trees, I printed those trees by painting them on the plate and then printing them. And what I got was varied color because the light color that was underneath showed through in some cases when I printed it. So it makes it, it makes a very unique look, a very different look than if I had just painted this with a brush. So yeah, there is a method to my madness. <laughs> It, there's a reason I'm doing it. It's it's not just because, oh, I felt like gel printing today instead of painting. No, I've, I felt like this would be really cool looking. And I think that the, the end product is really cool. I like it. But <clears throat> of course, it's an experiment. I haven't done this before. I've done layered, layered scenes where I've put mask upon mask upon mask. I'll try to um, link one. Of, I think I have a video of that. I'll try to link it in the i card above on the right hand side there's a little i that you can click on if you want to look at that process i think i did it with vinyl i i I'll have to look for it but anyway i haven't actually done this before 
but I, I love the way it turned out. So again, right there on the, the right hand side, that hill should have been a little bit higher. But because of the perspective of looking through the plate when I was drawing those lines on the back, it, I ended up making it a little bit lower. So then I had to fix it by adding a little bit more color at the top. And you can just use that. If all you have is one small plate, you can just use it the whole time because I'm, I'm putting colors on, I'm adding layers, I'm making it more interesting by just using a little bit of paint on the edge of this three by three and kind of patting it on and, and moving it around so that you end up getting different colors and different layers. And when, when you look at the close-ups, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's different. It's not, definitely not something that you could do with a brush, I don't think. Unless you use a, maybe using the rough texture of the paper to your advantage, you might be able to do something like this with a brush if you use stiff brushes over the rough paper. But I don't think so. I think this is a unique look. And the closest thing that I can compare it to is what a pastel, uh, um, you know, like chalk pastel looks like when you use it to create art or even oil pastels, especially over a textured paper. But yeah, I'm not doing that. So as I'm going, I'm also trying to um, save paint by only using a section of the plate and also by cleaning it, all the paint, all the excess paint I've put on other, other plates as I'm going and cleaning them off with what I have is some wadded up tissue that came in a package. You know, I like, I like to not waste. Waste makes me unhappy. <laughs> I like to uh, reuse things. I like to save things. And that wadded up piece of tissue paper is making really interesting collage paper as I go because I'm cleaning up my plates with it and, um, you know, taking off any excess paint. And then I'm also, of course, making a, a rolled off page on the other side, which I also really enjoy. I think they're interesting because they come out kind of like a grid because you're rolling the brayer and the brayer is very straight and makes a rectangle or a square shape. So I always enjoy those. But like right, right there, you saw I, I bounced around the plate. I used it kind of like a stamp, but it is applying paint as I'm doing that. And I'm creating all these different layers of paint and color and texture by doing that. And I think I pretty much finish the rest of the colors up by using just the small plate, I think. I don't think I even get out a bigger one at all. Um, over to the side here, I wanted to repeat some of the blue because I've got blue in the sky. And so I made kind of like a pond shape, like maybe there's a pond out in the fields at more rounded shape that's different than like the the mostly rectangular or square fields that I'm creating. They're supposed to be fields. So this was fun. So um, back to what about the moon. Um, what else can I say? It's nearest the auto, autumnal equinox. It's the time when you harvest. It's the time when you pick stuff. Um, it would have been fun to have the corn moon because I think it would have been fun to create corn on the, on the art, but that's not what this is this time. So, um, what I find interesting about the whole year is that, is that the, the moon, the full moon is getting earlier and earlier. Like at the beginning of the year in January, it was towards the end of the month and it continues to get earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. Now it's on the 14th. I'm guessing that next month it'll be even earlier. Let me check and make sure that I'm not out of my mind. Where's the full moon? Yeah, it'll be on the 13th in October. And, um, and then it moves to the 12th. So the reason that happens is that the moon rises about 15 minutes later. But then it slows down. And of course, we're, we're going to be coming up with lots of uh, colder moons like wolf moon because the wolves uh, hunt when it's cold and hunter moon and those type of moons coming up. 
in the next few months, and then the series will be over. I also wanted to say that uh, there is a Facebook group to go along with the Full Moon Art. It's not very active. <clears throat> I was hoping that people who were interested in named Full Moons would come and post their art in there. And there are a few regular art pieces coming in, but it's mostly people just wanting to look at it, I think. And so they join the group to look, and then they don't ever post their art, which is kind of sad. But anyway, to finish up the piece, I wanted to make it mixed media, and I wanted a farmhouse. And so I took a couple of uh, cleanup pages, <clears throat> just had some paint on them, and I made a red house and a red barn and um, put those down with a little bit of gel medium. And then I added a little bit of uh, bushes or something around it just to make this, the shapes not so square by tearing them out of cleanup pages as well. A cleanup page is when I have extra paint. I just scrape it onto a piece of deli paper or something and then that paint all collects and I use it for collage paper eventually. I even used a piece out of the, the uh, page, the roll-off page there on the left-hand side because it had some interesting colors, a layer of kind of a dark green over a yellowy green that was rolled off and it was the same colors as the piece and so therefore it was it coordinated well. So I used a little piece of that too. And then the final thing that I did, which is coming up, I think I'm creating my last bush here. Yep. <laughs> is since this looks so much like a pastel or a crayon type of look over the the bumpy paper I decided to do my highlights and shadows with well Neocolor 2 crayons but I also got out my distress crayons and the reason that I did is because the distress crayons will blend really well with a with a finger you can just blend them with a finger they're very creamy and they're kind of like a gelato sort of except for in a, a more a smaller format which is easier to apply so I added back in some of my lines, some of my roads between the fields with the, uh, I think this is vintage photo, vintage photo or walnut stain. I don't know, one of those distress crayons, which I could blend really easy. And then I did the rest of it with the Neo Colors, which the Neo Colors are very uh, pigmented. They have a lot of pigment in them, and so they're a little bit more opaque than any other crayon, which is the reason that I like them the best, because they are really, truly artist quality because of the high pigment load, the opacity. Of course, some colors are going to be more translucent because they are, are by nature, those pigments more translucent, but like yellows and things. But when you apply them directly to the paper like this over the acrylic, I can get a really interesting kind of pastel-y look, um, scratchy, crayon-like interesting look, and I, I enjoy that. So I use them to finish up my piece, just to add some detail, to add uh, color where maybe the, the, I thought the color needed to be slightly changed, to add shadow and highlight. And this is fun. This is something I love to do. I think this piece is really cool. Um, it reminds me of another uh, piece that I did on a bag, and I'm going to try to find that one too. Uh, kind of a, a fall or harvest folk art type of a scene on a paper bag. I should do some more of those because, you know, that's fun. You do a collage or a painting on a paper bag with a handle, and then you can just hang it up on the wall because it has a handle. <laughs> That's a good, I like that idea. I just forgot until just now. That's how it happens. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells. Please turn on your notification bells. And also, you can pin this on Pinterest or share it with your friends who might be interested in this type of art. It's a, a kind of a interesting take on folk art, I guess, a little bit. So yeah, I would appreciate it if you did all those things. I, I love to see my channel grow. I want to reach more people. I want to teach more people. I want to share. And when my channel grows, it makes me happy. I did add just a few tiny little details on the windows and the doors with a black Posca pin. And that was the only Posca I used. <laughs> so here comes the close-ups. Bye-bye.